Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why No One Plays. Today, I have a somewhat of a different episode. Normally, the champions I cover in this series are those who've been unpopular for a really long time, like the past few years. And while the same holds true for today's topic, he actually used to be a Why Everyone Plays, but over the past half decade, he's been in a constant downward trend. So today, we're going to be talking about what happened to Rangar, the Pride Stalker. Sort of like the rise and fall or why no one plays Rangar anymore. When it comes to iconic champions, we think of Yasuo, Lee Sin, Riven, Kai'Sa, you know, the super popular champions that come with a lot of notoriety. Back in the day, Rangar also used to be one of those infamous champions. He would consistently hold a pick rate above 10% due to his really explosive playstyle and insanely high carry potential. A ton of content creators, pro players, and streamers made names for themselves using this champion, and no doubt at least once in your life, you ran into that 95% win rate Rengar smurf on the enemy team who would quite literally 1v9 the game with no chance of you being able to stop him. He's well known for two things. One of the fastest one-shot burst combos in all of League's history and gaining a long-range targeted dash for an auto attack when in a brush, which makes him exceptional at surprising unwary opponents who don't keep track of his location or have good vision control. Actually, what he might be more well known for is how much AD carry means hate dealing with him because they take two steps out of fountain and get insta-killed. Rengar's downfall, like other champions, was a result of several events one after another that made it really difficult for him to survive in recent years. So before I get into the meat of the video, let's dive into a bit of history, shall we? During Preseason 7, Riot implemented a class-wide rework on Assassins to give them quote-unquote more skill-expressive gameplay in an effort to make them feel a lot better to play at a higher level, while also making them feel more fair to play against. A lot of good that did. Quite a number of them received small reworks that didn't alter their overall playstyle all too much, but there were four that received a major update. Katarina, LeBlanc, Rengar, and Talon. Funnily enough, Rengar and LeBlanc basically both got reverted. Well, the only thing that got reverted was Rengar's Q, but his passive W and ultimate remained the same post-rework. Here's a quick breakdown of the changes. Unseen Predator's Bone Tooth Necklace used to stack on takedowns, up to 20. At 3 stacks, it would give him a boost of movement speed out of combat or in brushes. At 6 stacks, it would greatly increase his jump range. 12 stacks would increase his ultimate duration. And at 20, it would double the bonus movement speed on his ult. The new version took away all of that and instead just made it so he would get permanent bonus attack damage. Most of the utility stacks he got were just added to his kit through other means. A move speed buff upon using an empowered ability. His jump range was just set to 725 by default, things like that. Battle Roar used to give bonus armor and magic resist, while the empowered version would be a heal that increased based on his missing health. The new one is vastly different. Instead, it heals you based on a percentage of all damage you took in the last second and a half, while the empowered Battle Roar cleanses you of all hard crowd control, so it's basically a QSS. If timed correctly, each Battle Roar can heal you for several hundreds of damage, which is why nowadays, you see a lot of people going Bruiser Rengar because then you can start healing for almost a thousand. Then lastly, we have Thrill of the Hunt, his ultimate. The overall function is pretty much the same. He gains a huge amount of bonus movement speed and enters stealth, making it so his next attack activates his passive, meaning he can jump. The key difference between the two is that the previous version was invisibility, while the reworked iteration was camouflage. Rengar's old ult was hilarious because you could actually stand right next to an enemy champion and they would not have any idea where you are other than the red exclamation mark above their heads alerting them that you're nearby. Yes, this also meant if he wanted to, he could run right past your teammates and go straight for you without anyone being able to do anything. Needless to say, wasn't much of a fun time for the backline. To compensate for this, the new ultimate lasts much longer, gives bonus movement speed unconditionally, and bonus damage and armor reduction on his attack. But it doesn't generate ferocity stacks anymore, so you can't do the triple Q combo in one second like you used to. At the end of it, he didn't really lose any effective power in his kit and is still capable of ripping a new asshole within the new asshole he just ripped. So what changed that made him so much less popular to play? The simple answer, they made him way harder to play. Rengar was always a difficult assassin to learn because you had to really understand how to capitalize on his passive to jump out of brushes, along with calculating how much damage you need in order to nail your target to decide which empowered ability to use, all while figuring this out in a split second decision. However, he was also really damn good at his job, to the point where it became almost too easy for him to do it after you got over the initial hurdle. The changes made to his kit post-rework removed a lot of those concessions, requiring tighter execution on the player to play him well. Overall, his pressure ceiling was significantly elevated, at the cost of making him severely unforgiving to play. 
The two most noteworthy changes that heightened his learning curve were 1. The removal of permanent ferocity. At one point, Rengar's ferocity stacks would never deplete, meaning he could stay at 5 indefinitely and be able to use two empowered attacks in a single rotation. 3. If you count his ultimate. This is how you were able to do the triple empowered Q and do like 5000 damage in one second. With that gone, Rengar's effective burst is not as guaranteed since you can't prepare for an assassination beforehand, at least not to the same extent. As a result of not being able to get triple Q anymore, the rest of his damage was distributed across his passive and ultimate, both of which aren't readily available in the early game. 2. Invisibility I mentioned before that Rengar was able to literally stand next to his opponent without being visible to them. Now that it's changed to camouflage, it's a lot more difficult to slip through enemies to get to your target. In a head-on teamfight, he can get zoned off by the enemy frontline because if he gets too close to them, like Evelyn, he would be spotted. That's not to say he can't loop around and attack from a flank, but losing the privilege to run right past tanks and bruisers without worrying lost him a lot of options. The reason people hate Akali, Shaco, and Kha'Zix so much is because of invisibility. You cannot see them even if they're straight up touching you. Rengar's kit is packed with utility that other assassins wish they could have. He has damage, he has mobility, he has sustain, he has burst protection, he has stealth, he has tempo, he has projectile, he has a cleanse, he has crowd control, he has DPS. But being able to capitalize on all of his attributes can never happen because now he can only really use one empowered attack in a fight. In my Manalus Champions video, I talked about how it's okay for champions to have no costs on their abilities so long as there was some other balancing element to their performance. In his case, Ferocity. His Q, W, and E are really underwhelming abilities if we just look at their base forms. Low damage, weak effects, but surprisingly high cooldowns relative to them. However, unlike other battle resource champions like Renekton and Pantheon, Rengar's empowered attacks are separate abilities on individual cooldowns, so essentially, he doesn't have three basic abilities at a time, he has four. Ordinarily, knowing which empowered ability to use was a no-brainer. It was usually Q because you want the extra damage. You'd only use Empowered W when you were clearing camps or farming to heal yourself up, and E if you're trying to lock someone down from afar. With the changes to his W, Battle Roar is no longer just a free sustain tool, it can only be used to recover damage you recently took, which effectively nerfed his sustain but increased his resilience. Since he no longer can consistently store up ferocity long before a team fight begins, he has to make a choice, damage or endurance. Choosing damage may lead to a clean kill, but unlike other assassins, you have to fight your way out, which won't be easy after you just blew all your cooldowns. Choosing endurance may help you survive counterattack, but it might mean you don't have enough burst to finish the job. In terms of skill expression, Riot definitely made their mark by forcing Rengar players to decide extremely quickly on their actions, but making his margin for error that unyielding was a huge turnoff for a lot of players. He was a hard champion to master before, but this rework made him even harder. Another issue that came up from these changes was that it made him a bit confusing to figure out, giving him somewhat of an identity crisis. Since they made a lot more of his offense conditional and adjusted his utility to be more reactive rather than proactive, Rengar now is this weird mixture between a diver and an assassin. His one-dimensional all-or-nothing playstyle was a drawback for him since his conception, whereas other assassins were more of the slide-in and slide-out. Since he commits a lot harder to a fight, players have recently been itemizing him as a bruiser so he would actually have the health and durability to survive. He has the burst damage of an assassin, but lacks the conventional slipperiness of them. If you think of Akali, she has a multitude of ways to get in and out of a fight, Kha'Zix can jump in, snipe someone out, then stealth his way back to safety, Zed blinks in with Deathmark, one-shots someone, then blinks back out, Yone can dash from 5 screens away, nuke the entire enemy team, and then yeet himself out of there. Once Rengar throws himself into a fight, even if he manages to burst down a squishy, he doesn't have the usual tools for escape. The two ways Rengar can get himself out of trouble are to re-enter a brush, then jump towards some targetable unit like a plant, jungle camp, or minion to get him away from wherever all the terribleness is happening. Or, he can use his enhanced battle roar to shrug off any lockdown and heal himself before running away. The first option is not always an option if a teamfight happens at a location without easy access to brushes. In terms of being a diver, he has the range and speed to reach the enemy backline, but neither the lockdown nor area damage you would expect on divers. 90% of his damage is single target, sort of like Vi and Camille, but he can't hold his target in place for a long time without compromising on damage. Other divers like Renekton, Hecarim, and Diana rely on their high AoE burst and DPS to deal as much damage to the enemy team as possible. Rengar doesn't quite match that either. Well, he used to when Tiamat was really strong, but that's gone now. This can either be seen as a positive or a negative. Sure, Rengar doesn't have the full package deal of either class, so he's not quite as effective in doing one or the other. 
But for an assassin, Rangar is pretty dang resilient. I'm sure we've all seen a Rangar go from 1 HP back to full with 2 casts of Adoror, not to mention the built-in cleanse on his enhanced one. How many assassins can face tank that much damage and live to tell the tale? Probably just Yone, but he's broken. For a diver, Rangar does a load of damage. He definitely hits way harder than a Warwick, Lee Sin, or Pandya, so you have to treat him like you would treat an actual assassin. Good Rangar players are able to optimize on both halves rather competently, but as I always like to say, it's usually better to just be really good at one thing than to be average at two things. Rangar's flexibility helps him switch between a hard one-shot burst assassin to a Hulk and Vulcan raid boss based on what the situation demands. But assuming he's not like blind picking into the enemy team, a lot of champions are better or more consistent than he is, which brings me to the third point. Rengar has some pretty tough competition. As time goes on, he deals with a lot of champions that straight up do his job with less difficulty. Since he has to basically throw himself onto his target, Rengar struggles a lot in team fights. I mean, assassins are supposed to, that's why they're called assassins. But in recent years, a lot more slayers and fighters have been released who can team fight just as good as they can skirmish, whereas Rengar sort of can't. The few assassins in the game who are still mostly single target like Kha'Zix, Zed, and Talon can do so relatively easily since they have stealth, untarget ability, things like that. In a teamfight, Rangar can't just casually run smack dab into battle. Success on him, especially in higher elo, hinges on thinking outside the box and finding alternative ways to exert your pressure if the normal way doesn't work. Having to jump through all those hoops when there are other options that don't require you to do so while achieving the same result is another big reason why people would much rather play someone else. In his background, he has his rivalry with Kha'Zix, another assassin with whom he shares similar traits. Both have a strong main damaging ability, both have a long range dash built into their kit, both have something that aids them in combat, and both have a projectile with more or less a similar goal in mind. The two are often compared to see which one is genuinely stronger in game, and while the winner was up for debate at the start, it's becoming more and more apparent that Kha'Zix comes out on top in a lot of circumstances. Unlike Rangar, who greatly relies on his empowered Q for extra bursts, Kha'Zix's Q takes their fear does the same damage whether he evolves it or not. The only thing he gets is more range and the cooldown refund on isolated targets. His evolved spike racks and jump are also the same in that upgrading them just extends their utility, not so much damage. Rengar's new Bone Tooth Necklace requires him to score a takedown on each member of the enemy team, which means if he falls behind, he's down 25% bonus AD that he really needs to reach his mid-game power spike. Again, more hoops you have to jump through. Putting it together, Rangar has become a lot more difficult to play without bringing the same kind of 1v9 hypercarry potential he used to be able to. Due to how hard it is to play him, his reliance on a strong start in the early game and ideal circumstances to play optimally make him less consistent and prone to being screwed over when fielded by an inexperienced player. While he didn't exactly get power crept, I don't think Rangar aged very well. When he's surrounded by people like Yone who can dash from 5 screens away and one-shot the entire enemy team, or Viego who can spam ultimate and execute everyone, or Diana who gets a 5-man ultimate, or Kiana who has so much AoE damage, it's understandable why Rangar doesn't feel like a fun choice. He's the case of a skill expressive champion that to the average player is just not worth the hassle or investment to get going. That said, I feel bad for him. He's frustrating as all hell to play against, but compared to Talon and Katarina who have been S-tier champions for the past like 4 years, Rangar has been on a downward trend the entire time and seems to just be getting worse and worse. He still has a 4-5% pick rate and a loyal fan base, but considering how ubiquitous he was before Season 7, he's seen better days. What do you guys think? Do you think he's due for a second coming, or are you happy that he's being played less? Let me know in the comments down below, but if you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated, and don't forget to sub to the channel for more content like this. Consider following me on my socials and joining my Discord server if you like. Lastly, check out my previous Why No One Plays episodes if you haven't yet. Thanks so much for watching though, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care.